Hi guys, my name is Mihai John. I'm a HVAC engineer and I'm working in the pharmaceutical industry. Obviously, I'm not this guy, I'm actually this guy. And honestly, rather than being a lousy manager, I decided to be a good engineer. I learn a lot and I understand a lot about different type of uh, technologies. I'm okay with the electrical equipment, software equipment, mechanical equipment, etc. Because I learned a lot, I had the privilege to travel around the world. I worked for multiple companies in Australia, United States, China, Israel. And um, all my life was like a mystery, like in this picture. I always fog in front of my eyes and I have to discover what is beyond that fog. What you'll see in this picture, it is a clean room and my duty it is to keep this clean room safe. I have to provide uh, clean air, also I have to control the humidity and the temperature while maintaining the correct pressure cascade in uh, rooms with uh, different grades. Like anything in life, you will always uh, come across challenges. Like you'll see here, I always observe trends. Sometimes things are good, sometimes are not. But observing these trends allowed me to do the proper analysis for air handling units when uh, assessing their efficiency. And that helps me to take the right decision when repairing or improving this air handling units. Now I would like you to look at this picture. I show you these pictures because I want you to understand how an air handling unit look like. What you'll see, I marked every single uh, item on this uh, air, handling, air handling unit. You can see we have heat exchangers, filters, fans, fans motors, a lot of probes which collect data about the air inside the air handling unit and um, this type of air handling unit it is uh, the air handling unit which recirculate part of the air while bringing some fresh air inside we have dampers which obviously control the quantity of air that is recirculated or the fresh air that will bring it inside unlike that one this type of um, AHU air handling unit it is the one that brings only fresh air from outside and uh, extract and exhaust that air is not recirculation. This uh, type of arrangement makes it harder for the air uh, temperature and humidity to be controlled. If you look into this picture, you will see a little bit clearer how this air handling unit it is. On the left hand side, the air is coming in passing by through two filters the cooling heat exchanger passes by through the motor obviously which moves the air and then continues journey towards the heater heat exchanger another filter and then the humidifier and then it goes inside the rooms from the room there's an extractor fan which extract that air and exhaust that air straight into the atmosphere so this type of arrangement it's a little bit uh, nasty you don't have too many chances to control the air if you miscalculate the heat exchangers or you have a wrong software this type of unit again it is the one which recirculate the air like you'll see in this picture on the left hand side on the top you have the extractor fan and you see there's a duct which link the extractor's fan duct to the HU and that shows you you recirculate part of the air you see three dampers on the duct that allows you to control the quantity of air that is uh, exhausted recirculated or the quantity of uh, fresh air that you want to bring inside the building the fresh air have its own uh, heat exchangers uh, and also um, after the mixing chamber you will meet the recirculated air and I'll explain to you in very detail how this works in another video. This is the AHU I want to talk in this video, the AHU which is not recirculating the air. 
See, with this unit you are at the mercy of the nature. You bring only fresh air and if the nature, if outside the air is changing the temperature on, or the humidity very rapid, the heat exchanger must have the capability to compensate for that so you can you will keep a constant temperature and humidity into the duct and you have to have a good software and you have to have the well calculated capacity look into this video you'll see how is it working just watch this the air comes in passes by through two filters the cooling heat exchanger and then you will meet the heating heat exchanger and uh, also the um, humidifier this uh, extractor fan will extract and exhaust the air from the room so imagine because you do not recirculate the air and you always bring fresh air inside and you'll extract that air you have to be very precise in controlling the humidity and the temperature into the duct now you can have a clearer view about the AHU, how is it working. You have the AHU and then you have a programmable logic control which collects data from the sensors and controls the actuator. Let's see how it works. Now I want you to pay attention to this picture. Each uh, heat exchanger it is uh, colored with a specific color so you can identify them easier. The blue color represents the cooling heat exchanger. The red one represents the heating heat exchanger. And the orange one represents the humidifier. So please be very careful with these heat exchangers because you have to understand when they are activated and why. As you will see in this video, the cooling heat exchanger and the heating heat exchangers runs together in the same time and you say whoa why would I need to cool the air and then to heat the air again I don't understand well my dear friends sometime when you want to dehumidify the air you have to run the cooling heat exchanger and the cooling heat exchanger will cool the air and you might not need the air to be cold so you have to reheat it to keep the air temperature constant so please remember when you dehumidify the air, sometime the temperature drop and you have to run the heating heat exchanger to keep the temperature constant. Guys, now you can see I'm running the heater heat exchanger and the humidifier. You will know that if you increase the air temperature, the relative humidity will show um, less because the heat will affect the air solubility so please don't get confused the absolute humidity will be increased in this uh, case so you keep the relative humidity constant while you're increasing the air temperature this is another scenario in this case you run only the cooling heat exchanger and as i said this heat exchanger can run now for dehumidification because as you know if you will drop the temperature of the heat exchanger below the dew point you will remove moisture from the air or maybe you only want to cool the air that will be uh, shown on uh, HMI as you will see here we have a programmable logic controller PLC which controls the actuators and the signal from the PLC comes from two probes one onto the supply air flow and one onto the uh, extract uh, fan duct. Finally, I'm running the cooling heat exchanger and the humidifier. Guys, when you run the cooling heat exchanger, unlike when you run the heating heat exchanger, you will drop the absolute humidity. You actually remove moisture from the air. So when you cool your premises as a side effect, you remove moisture from the air and sometimes you have to compensate the loss of uh, humidity and that's why I'm running the humidifier so it's really important uh, to understand the difference between relative and absolute humidity I will explain this in a very detail but also I have other videos that explain this in very uh, detail
guys let's talk about the mistake I told you about this AHO like you see in this video we have two uh, temperature and relative humidity probes fitted one onto the supply duct which is on the right hand side in between the PLC and the AHO it's marked with yellow it's a TSH probe and the other one which is on a extractor fans duct um, on the right hand side to the bottom can you imagine this system brings uh, air from outside only and uh, sometime uh, outside there can have a very fast uh, increase in his moisture or the temperature can drop very fast or it can raise very fast and uh, the, all that uh, air will uh, pass by through the HU, will pass the sensors onto the airflow, will go into the room and then you will be extracted and to that point that sensor onto the extractor fan duct will uh, pick up the fact that the temperature is too high or too low or the air have too much or uh, not enough humidity and it will act very late so because that um, probe instruct the PLC to act onto these actuators which controls the heat exchanger uh, the trend will look very bad because the room moisture will be too high before this uh, actuator to act and to allow the heat exchangers to do their job once the heat exchanger will start doing their job maybe it will dry the air too much or will cool the air too much or will heat the air too much until uh, the air will uh, reach the extractor fan probe so this is an imperfect system the system is okay the software I have nothing to say about the software but he is a control philosophy uh, error the engineer which wrote the control philosophy uh, never thought that the delay on reading the uh, air quality will uh, affect the uh, air quality into the rooms watching this trend you will observe immediately that there is something wrong the probe which uh, reads the temperature and the humidity uh, it's instructing the PLC to act onto the actuators too late because of its location that's an incorrect location and then the heat exchangers are doing their job but too late and then they overshot that's why you have uh, sometime too high humidity and then sometime uh, humidity is too low and the temperature look like that so please uh, watch my the other video I'm going to talk about uh, the uh, heat exchangers the maximum air processing capability and some other things that might help you to understand why your uh, air handling unit is not uh, working as it should and uh, you will learn how to analyze an air handling unit and then to overcome the mistake done by uh, some designers thank you